There was some, was some success last night for SpaceX. Uh, Elon Musk's rocket company both launched and landed a rocket at Cape Canaveral. Now, we've been launching rockets into space for a decade, but this one came back and it landed in one piece. According to CNN, a SpaceX spokesperson compared it to launching a pencil over the Empire State Building and having it land in a shoebox on the other side during a windstorm. Now, Ian, you say this is the biggest advance since Apollo 8. Uh, tell us what's so important about last night's landing. Um, basically, this... Okay, a small caveat on this. We still have to examine the rocket and see if it's reusable. But if it is, or if it's reusable at a fairly low cost, this completely changes the economics of getting into orbit. Um, I mean, at the moment, it's costing us millions to get, uh, I think it's about 30 million an astronaut to get them up to the International Space Station. If they can reuse the rockets in this way, that could cut the costs easily in half. Um, and the way they're talking about the Falcon Heavy rocket, if that can land as well with, without similar problems, then again, the costs of getting up into orbit and getting stuff around the Earth and getting satellites in position is dramatically lowered. Um, basically, this is the ability... When they actually when they landed this rocket, they just saved 75% of their hardware costs if they can reuse it. And even if they, you know, say, may have, may have to spend 10% of the costs redo, uh, re refurbishing the actual rocket, it's an enormous saving. Now, I mean, we've had the Space Shuttle, for example, which was reusable, but it cost almost as much to prepare the shuttle for the next mission as it as it did to sort of completely rebuild whole chunks of it so it's um yeah i mean this was a crowning moment and um it was i was watching it with my heart in my throat just please don't 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 explode don't explode don't explode and it came down in one piece yeah, I mean, that's the thing that the time also a lot of people were talking about how it's been six months since SpaceX launched a, lock, a rocket, but that's not really that long. Uh, if you think about it, I mean, in, in terms of the yeah, space I mean, program. I mean, the shuttle, the shuttle program was shut down for nearly two years after the, uh, the original explosion in 86. Um, they were really rather, uh, I was expecting the modesty to be even quicker than this, but what they did was use the time to do a redesign on the rocket. So they've increased the size of the fuel tanks and the size of the second stage, which allows them to get into geosynchronous orbit much more easily. Um, they've also changed around the fueling uh, system. So now they're super, cute, super cute cooling the oxygen down so it can, plant, it can pump a lot more oxygen into there. Um, so it's all in all, it's a, it's a new and improved rocket, a lot more thrust, and they used their time well from the looks of it because it all went according to plan. So this is part of why I love Elon Musk. He um, says crazy things, but it seems like he has a good heart as opposed to Jeff Bezos, you know, who has his own rocket company. Uh, and he put out a tweet that was just not nice. <laughs> I'm sure you have more colorful words for it, Ian. Just sort of like, oh, welcome to the club. I did the same thing, but he didn't really do the same thing. Uh, explain, no. explain the difference between their, uh, their projects. No, I mean, Jeff Bezos was, I thought that was incredibly snide of him. Um, basically, they're two entirely different things. Yes, okay, they're both rockets, but what SpaceX has is a commercial orbital delivery system. What Jeff Bezos has is a roller coaster for rich idiots who want to go into space for a few minutes. <laughs> and yes, he managed to land a very small rocket with a very with virtually no payload on it from a I think it was about fifty miles up. Well, you know, whoopie do. Um, SpaceX managed to get a much bigger rocket, which is traveling at Mach 7, turn it round, slow it back down, take it back down to the landing landing spot and land it in one piece. Now, if SpaceX had been allowed to land on land before this, I suspect they would have, we, would have, we would have been having this conversation months ago, but because they've been tied to doing it out at sea, which is a much trickier concept, um, then there was the delay. But Jeff Bezos' comment was just, it came across as really petty. You know, I, the the guy has done some stuff in rocketry, but the whole Blue Origins thing, it's it's space for tourists and it doesn't really take us any further. Whereas a recyclable orbit, orbital delivery system, that takes us a very long way indeed. So they have to still check to make sure that it's really reusable. That's the, the next step, I guess, right? That's going to be absolutely critical. I mean, if it turns out that, well, what they're going to do now is take this and they'll x-ray the entire thing, go through every component, seeing seeing how likely it is to fail do some more test burns here on here on 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 ground uh, just to see how the rocket works. So, yeah, I mean, if it's relatively cheap to refurbish, that changes the economics completely. If, on the other hand, they've got to rebuild large chunks of it, then it's going to be back to the drawing board and let's try and build a rocket which is um, strong enough to handle uh, several times re uh, re being reused several times.